this is David Starr from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm going to be talking about Two May Monks with the writer and director Rodrigo Bello and the three Gabriels who star in the film, Jose Duran, Benjamin Lakovsky, and Kime de Rio. We're going to talk to them in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Les voy a pedir que se abracen y que sientan su respiración y el latido de su corazón. Hello. Soy el padre de Gabriel. Yo, yo sé quién es usted, señor. Gabriel está muerto. Ahora quiero que piensen en alguien a quien aman mucho. He venido solo para hablar. Dijiste que no conozco a mi hijo. Quiero la verdad. Quiero que le digan a esa persona lo que significa para ustedes. Los que saben que era gay se ponían a nuestra relación porque ellos viven en el closet. Usted le está pidiendo a su hijo que odie su sexualidad. Usted le está enseñando a odiarse a sí mismo. ¿Qué clase de cobarde No es? soy cobarde. Estoy aquí. We make mistakes every second of our lives, mostly out of fear and ignorance. It's good to be able to discuss it openly. We need to stop hiding. So thank you so much for joining me. This is uh, Rodrigo Bello, the writer and director of Two May Monks and the Three Gabriel or Gabriels, uh, Jose Duran, Benjamin Lukowski, and Kime de Rio. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. The film is out. It came out in Bolivia in 2019, and uh, it is based on a 2015 play called Two May Monks, which uh, was groundbreaking and, and essentially kind of revolutionized Bolivia. It, it, it's a, kind of an amazing story. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> The, the, the film came out in 2019 in Bolivia. It was uh, Bolivia's official Oscar selection for the Oscars. Uh, and it has been released in America on April 22nd, 2021. And it comes to digital tomorrow on May 4th, 2021. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, Rodrigo, this is a, it's a very personal story for you, it, it seems. And um, you know, I guess, what was the process? You kind of get into some of it in the film, but I guess what was the process writing the play and then getting, you know, translating that play into a film. It must've been, you know, it's kind of like you have to go through the, the event multiple times. It must've been a difficult, but uh, <laughs> exciting process. Either I'm a, a masochist or <laughs> really committed. One of the two. <laughs> the both, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's hard. It's hard not to, um, it's hard to talk about the process without giving away the kind of like the making of the play. But it was um, exactly the same thing. You know, we repeated um, just to go back to the genesis. You know, I did, I did go through a loss. And uh, when I was writing a, a letter, uh, a friend of mine uh, who Rosaura is inspired by her told me, like, write a letter and say goodbye and, and you know, thank him for all the good moments and, and just do some sort of closure. And that letter was just so full of anger. And then I realized that I wasn't writing to him. I was writing to his family. Mm. And, then, and, and then I was also writing a lot about my relationship with my father and things that I, you know, I wish, you know, I would live differently, even though my parents were very, very supportive. But there was a lot of things that were just gaps between generations of two men in Latin America that, that, that triggered uh, that letter. And then um, a friend told me like, this, this is a fantastic play. Why don't you turn it into a play and, and you know, turn it into something beautiful. And then it became that play of um, the things when I got the call saying, you know, like you killed my son, uh, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, it was like, I just hang up the phone and, and the idea was like, what would have happened if I had to you know, if, if it had just told him how much I loved his son and how much he loved me and how much, you know, and that fantasy became the play uh, about the father and the son. And then, and then the process is, is kind of in the film, just like I found this amazing set of guys who had something really important to say and some were gay, some were not. And, but they just had, had a voice and didn't have a, uh, 
they were against things that, you know, we've been taught as men in Latin America, machismo and the idea you don't cry, the idea you don't feel, and just all those things that converge with the play. And, and they became my army. And, 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 and I started writing, the play became theirs. And, and so I just became a channel of, you know, a generation that wanted to talk. And, and then all, all of them um, had friends who were gay, struggling with, with that, or people who had survived suicide. He may actually brought a friend of his who were just um, being detoxed. He, he, he tried to uh, kill himself and was in the hospital. And he brought him right after the hospital to the rehearsal. And, and uh, he became one of the actors. Uh, in in the play and in the movie and and just one of the success stories and now he's accomplished so much he's been with his partner for three years and his family you know just an extraordinary story of of, of success and so uh that's kind of what, how the play and the movie came about and and once we saw the the, the therapeutic and the cathartic effect it had on people we just wanted to expand that into the world and now that's what's happening which is dream come true yeah it um it 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 seems like just such a kind of crazy uh experience like it's a crazy statement for latin america to have a film that is is this kind of raw and open and i and i think it's probably based because the play was so honest but it, it is kind of an amazing accomplishment to have this film come out of latin america and also to have it be bolivia's official selection i mean that uh, i think Thank it's a you. testament to how 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 this play and, and film is kind of shape you know changing culture out there um, yeah that's that's important if i may, I may say that because uh, i i you know the the film is credited with a lot of things and, and the, the play i mean is credited with a lot of things but i i think it's the success of hundreds, if not thousands of people who have been doing kind of groundwork and changing uh, the status quo in Bolivia, especially parents, not only activists, but parents who never give their back to the kids and supported them no matter what. And those are the parents who actually supported the play and, and made the play have the, the visibility that it had. And while I was distracted making the movie, they are the ones who change uh, Bolivia. Because the Bolivia that I encountered when I went to do the play is radically different from the Bolivia that chose an openly gay film that talks about this subject matters to represent the country in the Oscars. So, you know, I went from a Bolivia where I was afraid for my life for being gay to a country saying, I am proud of our gay filmmakers and our gay storylines. And uh, we want that to represent us in, you know, because we also were selected for the Goyas and, and uh, many other national awards like that. So it really was uh, a, a big testament how the world changed. And it's a generation like the guys that are here with us, you know, the, the Benjas and Kims and Jose's of the world that um, are doing that. It's, it's not me and not the play. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it's, it seems like the society is changing. And a lot of it seems to be this kind of, you know, it, you touch on it in the film, it's, it was almost like a culture of silence. Like, it wasn't talked about. It was like, oh, that doesn't exist in my family. When it does, you just don't acknowledge it. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the, the three Gabriels, uh, Benha, Jose, and Kim, um, I imagine you probably saw the play. Uh, how, how did you get involved in the filming of, of the actual movie? Did, were you in the play before? Like, how, how did that process go about? And um, I don't remember which, who was Gabriel one, but we can go with Gabriel one first. And <laughs> go <through that. laughs> is that, is that well, me? I, I, am I, am I... <laughs> actually, actually, Jose is, is Gabriel one, but um, Kim was in the play. He's, uh, he was a lead in the play. So. Oh, wow. Uh, Benja and, and, and Jose just joined the, the, the film later on. So Kim can tell you a little bit about what the process of, of that. Okay, one, because it's also his first play and his first movie. Quite <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a start. And his first yeah. short also. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, everything. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like Rodrigo was mentioning, kind of a, um, a commitment, a multi- deal commitment without knowing it <laughs> in the sense that um the first time i already knew rodrigo uh from bolivia and and he once approached me and he was like i have this idea i want to make it a, a play and uh even though i was of course at the beginning a little bit hesitant because of all the stigma and and all the things that i in that moment thought that it could be 
you know, how it could be received. Fortunately, I was proven wrong. And of course, the movie was, was really well received. So I um, took on the, the role, we did the play. And after the play, I was doing my, th my thing, working. And I was based in DC, in Washington, DC. And he told me, he approached me again. He was like, okay, remember the, the play? We're going to do a movie now. Uh, so yeah, I, I jumped on board immediately after, after witnessing and being part of what the play and the impact had. That's that's awesome. I mean, like that, that's that's such a crazy story that this was your your first play and then your your first movie and you kind of you know kept getting drawn back into it. So uh, yeah, yeah. Jose and Benha, did you, did you? I assume you saw the play, but maybe maybe you didn't. Maybe you just kind of you know saw this interesting yeah. film. Uh, you know, how, how did you get involved as the other Gabriels? It was it was the complete opposite for me. Actually, I had no idea about the play. Uh, I had, I'm ashamed to say, I had no idea about like who Rodrigo was. I'm Bolivian and I should know about Bolivian cinema. And I didn't, <laughs> when, when I went for the first audition, I know I, I, you know, we met and he was shocked that I was from Bolivia. I guess he didn't know there were many like Bolivian actors in New York. So uh, he was, uh, yeah, we, we, we had a, it was a great first audition. But then I started re researching Rodrigo. And then I saw that he is like one of the most important influential <laughs> directors in Bolivia and that's when I started freaking out like it was like there's so much pressure and the callback and everything and, but uh, I was I was excited I was so excited to be part of the project he sent me a link to the to the play I got to see it for the first time I was so moved it, it was absolutely beautiful uh and uh and yeah that, that's kind of how I uh, found out about the play and about Rodrigo and then uh yeah, the audition process happened. I was offered the role. That was actually my first role right out of uh, acting school. Like, oh, I wow. had been out of acting school for only like a month, I think. And and I found this on like a casting website. And uh, I didn't have an agent or manager or nothing. So it was like my first big, my big role. Yeah. And it was, uh, and it, it was great. I, I'm, I'm glad this was my first experience, you know, in, in this world, in this industry, because like, we became like a family. It was it was a beautiful experience. Like it was like I I became such good friends with Rodrigo, with everybody on the set, all the actors, uh, everybody in the crew, and uh, there was just this level of trust, you know, that, that was so beautiful, you know, like R Rodrigo trusting us with his words, with his story, you know, with us, but, and, and it was you know it was mutual, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Maybe it was better that you didn't know anything about Rodrigo during that first interview because you just kind of went in, you know, yeah, oh, this will be interesting. Yeah, I would have been so nervous. I would have, I would probably like the <laughs> audition. I would have. <laughs> but anecdotally too, he, you know, uh, he came for a, a callback and I kind of knew, uh, you know, the first audition, I knew it was him. But my casting director said, like, no, 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 let's let's give him a callback. Let's just, you know, let's make sure. And he was so well prepared and he just is so charismatic. And and like uh Stig, our casting director said, like, let, let me do this that I love doing is like offering the role on on the callback oh. <laughs> on the moment. And it was really, really wonderful. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I broke down. I was like, crying. he started like, crying, <laughs> we all cried. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so uh ben how like i said you seen the play before or is this uh were you also similar that you hadn't seen the play but kind of just had this you know saw the cast uh, <laughs> uh -oh. so Truth time. <laughs> we, i met we met with rodrigo almost 14 years ago uh i had my first uh casting as an actor with with him, um, which I didn't get casted for the role because of my physicality. I remember the, the conversation we had with, after the, the casting and everything. But ever since then, um, I've been on Rodrigo's life and I'm so grateful about it. Uh, I told you before the, the, the meeting, uh, we did almost, we did three projects together already. Um, Hopefully, we, we're going to keep doing more. I've seen the play in Bolivia, and I've seen the play here uh, when we were uh, pro, uh, preparing everything for the, for the role. And like, like Jose said, like, we created a family. Uh, 
a hundred people family. Like it was beautiful. Every day on set, uh, every day off set. Um, it was heartbreaking. Also, the 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 preparing for the role, the going to the LGBTQ centers of suicide and everything. It was. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if you, you may remember that uh, when we were doing the short film for the for this, and it got me so involved. Yeah. It, it was just um, one story after after another, and one story after another. It was increasing my 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 will of wanting to do this for what what, we, what you were speaking with uh, Rodrigo before. Like uh, it's it's it's. We are creating a community. We are creating a movement. We are creating something that is helping uh, so many cases of people who are treated wrong for being themselves. So yeah, it's 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 amazing. This project is it's beautiful. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the, the prep aspect of it. You know, one of the scenes in the film that I I, I really liked. I mean, it was much more raw than I kind of expected. Was when you you had. I think it was kind of during the interview process, you had the actors kind of talk about their experiences, um, you know, growing up and, you know, kind of coming to terms. And like, there were some very explicit rocks, you know, descriptions there, like, you know, the one where the person would, would masturbate to pictures of women and just feel shame was, I mean, you don't, you don't normally hear that in a film, but it's such a kind of real example of, of how these young people are trying to kind of come to terms and, and even deny who they are. And it was such a, such a strong, um, and that's and that and what you hear on the movie, it's light. It's very light. It's yep. very oh, wow. <laughs> from what from what we heard and saw from for pre preparing the role. It's insane. It's it's disgusting, literally. Mm. Yeah, we we, we we we. I mean, during the play, those stories were real. You know, as I was interviewing this actor, because the thirty, like I said, Kim, it was his first play, and he was the most professional actor in the thirty. Gabriel's um, and so like the other guys were not they were just kids who were coming out of uh, hospital after surviving suicide or uh, kids who were kicked out of their houses um, for being gay um, you know were outed um, you know without their permission and, and were just mistreated and you know um, so a lot of the story all the stories that you hear in that scene that you're describing are true uh, but what I did was that it's interesting just to protect their, their you know, because they're playing an actor. So and I, it was never about them um, to expose their, their, their story. So what I did is I, I, I kind of wrote down what I remember the conversations that I had with them. I told them I was going to do this. And then I, I changed the order of, of the testimonies and each one got, got to pick one. And so they're acting the testimony of their friend and they knew who was, whose testimony was, but so they were trying to honor that um, best way possible. Um, uh, and it was only one of them or two of them who actually wanted to do their own testimony. So that, that was also really brave and, you know, Andrea and, and, and Rodri. So um, it was really beautiful that, that, you know, we did that because that's what brings that honesty and that truth and people are really want to do that. And then when we went to New York, I wanted to show them, you know, because we don't have that and we didn't have that in Bolivia. Just the amount of resources that you have for suicide prevention. You know, we, we went to the Trevor Project, which we created an alliance with. We, we went to the center in New York and uh, there was uh, this great uh, guy doing in, uh, theater for suicide survivors and LGBTQ community. Uh, and then they got to hear, as Ben Ha was saying, great, you know, just uh, heartbreaking stories of sort of resilience, survival, and also rejection. And uh, especially because it's funny that it, a lot of people are saying, you know, like, oh, this, this happens in Latin America and it's really understandable. We're way behind, but then people tend to forget that the US is no different. You know, yeah. uh, it's easy to get confused with the parades and the visibility that we see, but there's a lot of people who are living their truth in New York, but once they go back home in, in, in Nebraska or Kansas, you know, they have to go back to, to being closeted and uh, there's a fear of rejection and, you know, 
It's 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 still a thing. I was dealing with this when I was trying to make, raise money for the movie in 2016. People told me like, dude, like this doesn't happen anymore. You know, like there's gay gay marriage. There's just like every, every everything is normalized in the United States. This this sounds like a dated uh, story. And then uh, a couple years later, Donald Trump got elected, and every single body that told me that this was dated and there was no homophobia or racism in the United States anymore, called me back and said, dude, I'm so sorry. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to, to acknowledge that as well. It's a global pandemic. Hate. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely important. I mean, yeah, like it, you talk about America like, a, or you kind of feel like America has moved on. But, you know, I think it was 2008, California rejected gay, like California rejected yeah. gay marriage. Um, it, it, it's it's kind of mind blowing how how much progress we've had. But then also the Trevor Project is, is a relatively new uh, foundation as well. And it's, it's you know, it, it's something that you can't yeah. ignore because it still is difficult even in America. And I can't even imagine how difficult it is in Latin America to come out and be out and, you know, feel comfortable. So, um, so going to yes, the, uh, <laughs> I guess, going to the, the film itself. So, you know, you had, you had three people playing uh, Gabrielle and they, and they just kind of interchanged in scenes. Like you would have one line from Van Ha and then a line from Kim and a line from Jose. And it was like, how did you film that? Was it written in a way that you would have like Gabrielle one, Gabrielle two, or did you just kind of have people do the scenes? You just kind of cut them as appropriate, you know, you kind of everyone did everything and then you just kind of cut through, you know, to the various uh, Gabrielles. Yeah, I, I th this has never been done. And so it, it's a testament to the just amount of trust and great producers that I had because we actually had to shoot the film three times. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's three times as expensive because it's, you know, uh, a normal five-week shoot became a nine-week shoot um, just because of the amount of repeating. And every actor had the time and if they had to do five takes to get it right, they would do five takes. But then Gabriel number two would come in and do the whole film from scratch, you know, and and, wow. uh, and Fernando was our lead actor, just like maintaining the same emo emotional continuity every time with a different actor proposing different things. And then all three of them had a different kind of like, they never saw each other while doing the performance. So they could bring that authenticity without copying or mimicking. So it's a great testament to, to their work because they didn't know what was gonna be selected. And then we had a uh, 18 month editing process where a great uh, editor, Rafael, um, just found the best performances of each one of them and in creating that balance. And that's kind of like a choreography uh, with them playing with this, this concept that I've never seen on film. A, re a critic just mentioned that the only person that has done something similar uh, is Buñuel, uh, which he had two actresses, but one that was from the beginning to the middle and the other one from the middle to the end. Um, but it was a kind of great point because it was trying to prove that male audiences in 1920s were so dumb that they couldn't distinguish between one actress and the other. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and then uh, it did happen, but this was, yeah, very different. <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, it must have been a surprise for- but I'm for... curious to, to know the experience of the boys yeah, what, what was that like kind of watching the film, like not knowing which scenes you'd be in? I bet when you're watching, you're just like, oh, there, oh, there, oh, there. Like, how, how was that experience? Like, like, not knowing kind of what the finished product even looked like until you're kind of seeing it on screen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, who starts? Jose. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I guess that, well, like Rodrigo was mentioning at the beginning, we didn't actually um know about the other's perspective the other actor's perspective on uh, of course we had the same uh blueprint of a character but uh rodrigo uh, worked with us with different type of uh, verb actions which led us to different interpretations of the character that was going through the same thing which i think that combined with what rodrigo was mentioning that was great editing you could actually see three distinct persons within one same person um so how we achieved that was basically like we we were we were hiding 
in the in the green room as the other actor was performing uh and doing trying to stay the most um absent from from the process so we didn't get you know uh influence of it and and change our own emotion which was a challenge at the beginning because of course it was our first film we're curious we want to see the other one we're nervous we want to see what he does whenever who goes first we want to you know check it out uh but we had to tame those those impulses in order to to be truthful to the process we were we were doing yeah really? i oh sorry no, 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 go, go, go ahead. I was yeah, oh. I'd like to hear everyone's perspective. And then I'll uh, cut I'll cut these together into one, you know. <laughs> I'll just take the best answers for each. <laughs> just get my best bits, you know. Where I'm gonna, <laughs> and just, <laughs> uh yeah, I think it's just I think it's a testament to the casting and Rodrigo's choice of, of us as actors and the rehearsal process because you really do see three distinct personalities on screen, which is what's so interesting, I think, and beautiful, you know, because you have someone maybe reacting in a more shy way or, or, or a more sensitive way, somebody's more aggressive, you know, and that, that, that's the beauty of it. It was just like different colors of the character, you know, and I had no idea how it was gonna look on screen, you know, I was actually kind of like, really curious and really kind of like okay how, how is this gonna work you know <laughs> even throughout filming i was like how is this gonna work you know? yeah. and then seeing the final product was just like wow that is that's it's it, it just works and it flows beautifully like, and, and then i mean i guess that's also a testament to the editor you know because uh, finding like those great moments and having this like full the fullness of this character gabriel through these different actors it was a uh, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing thing to watch. Yeah. It was a gamble, a gamble, and it worked out well. <laughs> but we yeah. didn't know that before doing it. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine I think that just like, you know, you're looking at three good performances and trying to pick out like which is the right one of these three <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> True. Oh my god. Um Honestly, they said everything. I, I have not much to, not much left to say because I feel the same way. Like, um, even though we were separated between takes and stuff, like again, the family thing. There was something connecting the three Gabriels, even though they were like very, very um, apart from each other in a way. Um, um, emotionally because one of the Gabriel will go yes honey I love you and the other will go yeah honey I love you or, or like <laughs> things like that but there was something as as Jose Kime and, and, and Benha that it was like connecting us in a way to do the Gabriel I don't know if I can if, if you guys if I can explain if I explain myself but yeah it, more than more than Gabriel also was Jose Benjamin and and Kimei connecting in a way to do the better Gabriel on each way so yeah I I, I loved the process I love the the results I I even uh, I saw the three-hour movie with Rodrigo that was oh the first cut the first cut was <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It was beautiful. Like, like, like you could see everything. Everything we shot, you could see it there, but it was too long. <laughs> Director's cut coming out. Yeah, yeah, you know, the say, it was, 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 was a Rodrigo five. cut. <laughs> yeah, it was a five Rodrigo between, cut. <laughs> literally, it was a fight between passion and business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it interesting that they, 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 I, they had you know, talking about just actors, like they had the freedom to create their own version of Gabriel. And I wanted to, to be very respectful and honor that. And so they had very different ideas of where they were in a relationship. And, and those nuances are seen that. So what we're trying to do in the editing is kind of rescuing those nuances that they brought, you know, the doubt that they had in the relationship, the need that, that Gabriel three had in the relationship to be, to be saved from his parents. And then this kind of like conviction that the other one had that it's like, this is not going to work. You know, his parents are not going to allow for this to happen. This is, this has an expiration date. And what's interesting is the sex scene, because we actually brought 
these nuances to how how did Gabrielle have sex with Sebastian, you know? And all three of them had very distinct, very different ideas of how their sexual life was. And uh, I try in the sex scene, I tried to kind of honor that and, and, and bring that that chemistry and that that power relation and that um, you know the complexities of how each one of them and I didn't say anything. They you know, one of them said, I think uh, Gabriel is a top. And I was like, oh, I think Gabriel is a bottom. It's like, oh, I think he's versatile. It's like, you said it, not me. We're going to explore that. And, then, um, <laughs> and it was just really, really beautiful. And, that, and that, yeah, that sex scene also was, you know, kind of more intense than I expected from, you know, a Latin film, you know, even most American films. It was, and, and that's not a criticism. Like, I, you know, my view is like you know you have sex scenes like that in a you know, heterosexual sex scenes like that in any sort of film so you know why not have a homosexual sex scene like that even just kind of show the reality um but just that was, a sex scene yeah exactly and it's a very well, for me, scene for, too. yeah thank you thank you for saying that for me it was very important to uh i think we're everybody's seen once or, or twice a gay sex scene as you said you know most traditional films have heterosexual sex scenes mm -hmm. so for me that was an opportunity not to show sex but um my own confrontation with how i see gay sex represented in cinema it doesn't represent me and it actually perpetuates this raunchy mm -hmm. kind of like just pure sex and it's it, and i wanted to bring tenderness i wanted people to know that when two, two men love each other there is tenderness there is humor there is uh communication and 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 so for me it was a point of develop the best way I could think of to develop that that connection that they had through the sex scene because um, we tend to just put it on the sex category and it's something physical and it but it is the the moment of intimacy and it's the reason why this is our heart rate wrenching um, love stories because you know what they had in the in the most pure intimacy and that's the whole idea of that scene. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it is definitely a more, you know, longer, tender scene than I think you get in a lot of, of cinema uh, in any sort of gay kind of sex scene. It is very physical often. So it was it was nice to kind of see that tenderness and intimacy uh, on screen. And they also, I wanted to, uh, I'm sick and tired of answering the question of the, who's the man and the woman in, in, a, in, a, in a sexual relationship, in a gay sexual relationship. So I just wanted to show that there is no gender, oh, that there's yeah. no, no power structure. It's like we are just one body. You know, we're, yeah. we're playing, we're surfing, we're flowing. And it's, uh, uh, and, and I think that's what it should be. And I think it, it is, you know, regardless of whether it's gay or straight or bi or whatever, it is two people communicating through intimacy and there is no gender to that. So, um, you know, let's, let's go each of you. How was that to film? And, you know, what was, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be endless. Yeah. <laughs> Retake. Um, so, you know, you mentioned that you, you kind of wanted to have each, uh, each actor bring kind of their own distinct take on, on Gabriel to the film. Um, but, you know, you were communicating with each other. So did, uh, did you three, did you exchange notes? Did you talk about scenes or did you kind of, you know, keep your vision separate and just kind of go in and do your scene and then come back out and try not to hear about it? Like, how was that filming process, you know, when you're playing the same character and, and you have this through line of, of Gabriel, but then also you're trying to kind of bring your own distinct ver visions of it? Do you mean talking about the scene with the director or talking with the other Gabriel? With, with each other. With each other. Oh, with, the, with the actors. Um, uh, uh, I don't think uh, I don't think we had many conversations about exactly what we were doing mm -hmm. as characters. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we were just there to kind of support each other uh, in different ways, not necessarily talking about what we were thinking of, of what we were going to do in the scene or anything like that. Uh, so... Yeah, at least that was my experience. I don't know if you guys remember anything from. No, same same response for, for me. Yeah. Same answer is we were talking about the movie. We were talking about ourselves, how we were feeling within the role. But uh, no, no, um, we we weren't like saying, okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm feeling like this. So what should I do? We, that was more with Rodrigo or Sebastian. Mm -hmm. Or within, 
paints itself like in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Even the rehearsals were separated. They weren't always, you know, I wouldn't rehearse with all three of them. I would rehearse with each one of them and, and Sebastian separated. Uh, and they had the same kind of tasks, the same kind of workshops. But so it was, it was very complicated in terms of Logistics, at one yeah. point I asked them to go on a date with Sebastian. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, so opened the, the we, we opened grinders. <laughs> I told them to open a grinder account Literally. and uh, and and see what it felt like doing that. Uh, but was... they had to open it as Gabriel, not as them. You know. Okay. <laughs> what they do on their own time is is is. There. <laughs> <laughs> I had two accounts. Uh... Yeah, they had, they had separate phones, right? This is, this is Gabriel's phone. This is my phone. Let's hope they don't one mix. with glasses and the other one without yeah. glasses. Oh, you're like matching to yourself. Glasses. You're like, well, this is going to be awkward. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I mean, what the guys are saying is what ultimately happened. But I don't know about you guys, but I was so curious. I was like fighting the impulse to watch the other. Uh, Dude, to discuss it. every single crack I would find between between the scenes, <laughs> I, w- I was like, this. yeah, because <laughs> and also because Ben and I were like Jose was living in New York at the time. So Ben and I were the ones who had to relocate to New York to shoot. So we were uh, assigned the same unit uh, in, a, in an Airbnb. So we were together. So. We kind of, and we were just meeting each other. So there's this process of, okay, you're meeting someone. So you talk about something. What are you going to talk yeah. about? The most interesting experience you're having. So we didn't talk about it, but I was like internally in conflict. But I think uh, we solved it with, with Rodrigo, uh, what he was mentioning about doing rehearsals differently. And also because whenever I had to rehearse, um, I, I used to choose, go on a quiet, I used to choose a cemetery. And I just went there and, and rehearsed there. Oh, wow. So, but that was the result. But the process, I was like so curious and fighting myself yes. all, all the time about, ah, I want to see how it is. I want to talk about this. Did you guys like this? Did you see this? But yeah. Uh, I learned afterwards that it's not about that. So good thing I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the other scenes in the play or in the movie, I mean, I don't know, this, this may be in the play. I haven't seen the play, so I'm not sure what's in the play, what's in the movie, uh, was the, the scene between uh, Gabriel's father and the, the, the father, the, uh, the, the priest kind of discussing religion. I thought that was such a, you know, strong scene because you always hear like the justification, oh, it's in the Bible. Yeah, the Bible says a lot of things and yeah. some things are, are conveniently forgotten uh, for modern life. Um, so, you know, I thought that was so important in a film that's supposed to kind of be a testimonial to kind of show where some of these logical reasoning, you know, might not actually make sense. Is that from the play uh, or was that kind of no. added? Okay. The, the, the play is mostly a conversation between the father and, and Sebastian. Okay. So none of the, actually none of the Gabriels are in the play uh, the way they are incorporated in the movie. And it was an opportunity to actually uh, let you understand what the relationship was in, in, in the film that's not in the play. The play is about the father and the, and the boyfriend. Um, but uh, and all the secondary characters in New York did not exist in the play either, but oh, wow. uh, they are true. I mean, they're all based on true friends of mine who were with me during the process. And uh, yeah, so each character in the film is based on somebody that does exist um, and they have an equivalent in that kind of just turn them into a character and and at certain points the, I mean uh, the Rosauras uh, kind of had a, 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 an exchange and um, uh, the, the character Tommy plays uh, at the restaurant um, he's based on somebody that I know very, very close friend of mine so they've met each other <laughs> Um, but the priest is somebody that I met and, uh, it's who used to be a pastor and who left his um, church because of the church's views, on, um, and just talking to people. And then at the end of the day, he became kind of like a volunteer and he started like a group, uh, in a different church to foster kids who were kicked out of their houses and, Wonderful, extraordinary man. Um, his name is James in real life, and that's why the father is called Father James. That's an homage to him. 
Um, and uh, now he's a father of two and he has two kids and he's like, oh man, I, I hope my son is gay because, <laughs> um, you know, because I, I know, I know that I wouldn't fail him. And it's, he's an extraordinary friend. And, and um, um, so it was important to do that. But for me, it's interesting because while I was going through this, the mother who constantly was saying that she had cancer and it was God's punishment, she kept on quoting those verses mm -hmm. of, from the Bible, um, you know, the, the whole, all the verses that condemn homosexuality. And so I knew that the haters would come back to me with, oh, it's in the Bible, so you can't fight that. So um, once I had a conversation with, with Father James, um, you know, and, 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 and we talked about this, this parts of the Bible, I was like, this is important to go there, even if it sounds preachy, it's important because I know it's going to be the weapon that's going to come back to, you know, they're going to use this against us yeah. when the film premieres. Uh, so we need to anticipate the, the move. Um, and that's what, what he did. But I, I'm, I'm so glad because a lot of people really love that scene. And, and, and you know, I, I, I was tempted to cut that scene because I felt it was too preachy. Um, but uh, I, I'm glad we did. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think it was too preachy. It comes off as just kind of conversational, right? Like it's you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible, and some stuff you know, some you can agree with, and some you don't. But you can't, you know, if if you're gonna try to take a hard line on one, then probably should give up polyester. Which, as you as you say in the film, it might be a good thing. But you know, it's uh, it it does kind of it, it didn't come off as preachy to me. It felt like very kind of natural and, and conversational and then there's a couple references to the bible which i thought was you know kind of a good addition as well thank you um so that's that's interesting though that the the film was kind of just a you know an additional extension of the play because i i was you know watching it and you kind of you, you you kind of no, normally see two different types of films based on plays you see kind of the full dramatization or like what they did with Hamilton of just, you know, the play being put up as a film. And this one kind of straddles the line. I mean, I'm, not, I'm sure it's been done before, but maybe it hasn't. It, it just, it felt so unique. And I do love the idea that you kind of extended onto the play to kind of fill in some additional uh, dramatic elements. Um, you know, was that, is that just kind of how you were envisioning creating a movie? And then, you know, that, that's kind of the process or did you, when you started kind of planning out how you were going to make this film, uh, you know, adopt this play, like you just kind of realized that you needed some more drama to to keep the audience. And then you were going to keep the audience for three hours. I, I think it would have been fun. Like a three hour cut would have been fun to watch. <laughs> now that it's coming to digital, just the, you <laughs> no. know, special Way feature. too much crying. <laughs> Sometimes you need a good cry. It's way it, too it, much it crying. Is. People were it is a good time to cry. Exhausted. Yeah. Uh, no, the, 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 the way, the way it, it evolved, it wasn't because of the, I wasn't thinking, this is what's beautiful about this. When we were making the play, I had, I had this is my first play that I write and direct. I, had, I, I was not thinking about the audience. I was not thinking about the commerciality of it. I was thinking about the urgency of, of bringing this to people and making it accessible because in the process of making the play, I lost five friends to suicide. In the mm -hmm. process of making the movie, I lost seven friends to suicide. Um, so I didn't have a time to think about, uh, or that privilege to, to think about my art. You know, um, this was done out of urgency. Um, and, and also with that, there was a lot of fear. You know, we thought we were going to get kicked out of the country for doing this play. We thought we were going to be lynched. Um, and so uh, I kept a lot of things to myself out of fear. And when I was given the opportunity to kind of revisit and I knew how much it reverberated and resonated on people's hearts with the play, I was like, oh, now I can actually, I can actually show and share Gabrielle. And, and one of the things that people told me is like, I, I wish I knew what you guys had, you know? And I was like, ah, this is it. I need to, I need to share what we had. I need to share what it was because then it, it, people fill in the blanks with their absence of references you fill in the blanks with just like a bunch of guys fucking and that's not what we had you know you know the reason why people don't understand you know lgbtq love is because you don't have references you don't know how it is and so i needed to to expand that and and, and also it's a great opportunity to expand to see a world 
where I, you know, I live, uh, I lived almost 25 years in New York and my community, uh, my chosen family, as I call it, is uh, trans, bisexual, queer, is uh, Egyptian, black, Dominican, New Yorican, it's Afro-Latino, it's, it's uh, super, super diverse, it's Asian, it's all of that. American so, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and so, and, 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 and some of us speak Spanglish, some speak Spanish and English, and, you know, we have accents and it's multicolored and multilayered. And I was like, I wish I could make a movie that shows how everybody with their differences live and support each other. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something we don't get to see in Latin America. We're very communal and we all live in very, you know, safe spheres of people of your own class, of people of your own color, of people of your own you know, on uh, a locality, you know, some, Bolivia has a lot of problems between like the people from the north and hey, the people from the south and people from the east, hey, the people from the west. Um, and uh, so I wanted to, to, to extend that life and show you that you can live a world that is so multicolored. And that's where the idea of showing my friends came. And your, your friends seem like a lot of fun, too. I kind of want to go hang out with them and, and have lunch with them. <laughs> I'm a very fortunate man. Keith, <laughs> uh, 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 Jose, and Ben, did you, did you get to meet these uh, these friends during during the stream? Did they come to, to watch, or was it the... What, was Some of them. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. Were they, I mean, were they as outspoken as they were in the, in the film? <laughs> again, some of them. <laughs> we, we actually had the the opportunity to to meet them and like meet this ecosystem that inspired the movie uh afterwards because uh after the movie ben and i uh rodrigo was already in new york but ben, ben and i moved to new york uh, to to study acting so in that sense the community that started with the the film expanded throughout expanded throughout our years there and and we actually got to meet a lot of people were uh, I don't know if, if, if this is true or correct, but I thought to myself, mm, that person has a little bit of that uh, of that uh, character in the movie. I don't know if he draw it from there, is it, if it's a mm. mesh of two people or yeah. something like that, but I could see in Rodrigo's ecosystem a lot of references from the movie, and I was like, hmm, he got it from there. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I don't, I don't, movie, I don't right? name my sources. I don't name my sources. Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah. I, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't be able see. to put a name and say like, "You are this one in the film." But uh, yeah, I could see things, and I was like, "Hmm, those guys." <laughs> that's also a really good point. I, at the end of the day, there's also, um, you know, a lot of characters are combinations of, of characters, you know, uh, and so um, they're not specifically. Uh, caricature or, or or a representation, but for instance, Tommy's character is um, is three friends, you know, in 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 you know that sexual prowess and that just talk and the way you know he's always like looking for a, a joke and a pun and 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 there's three friends that that they know that are influences to to. To that character, and and in the same with with Dominic's character, it's also an influence of several friends who were very nurturing to me in that moment, but also very flamboyant, but also very spoken about the Latinos, and uh, so it's, it's really really cool. Yeah, uh, it, it, it seems like a fun community, and I did like I did like how supportive the community was. You know, they uh, you know they embraced both Gabriel and also his father. Um, and you know you, you get this kind of just very loving friendship that de- that develops you know very quickly and it seems like they they embraced you know them both as kind of not lost souls but like you know newcomers people that didn't you know that, that needed a sense of community and just kind of added on and I imagine that's that's how it was when the uh, when you you all started uh, hanging out with them as well in New York <laughs> yeah um, so, uh, interesting uh, interesting uh, anecdote um, there's one character I won't say who and what or but uh, he's based on a friend of mine and uh, I invited my friend to see the, the film and in one of the premieres and I told him it's like you're gonna yeah he knew that I was I was gonna use his story um, in in the film because I asked for permission to all of them but some of them asked me, it's like, I, I don't want to, I don't want people to know who I was. And some people said, I don't care. Um, but I did tell them, like, this guy is going to play you. Uh, um, 
And uh, when he saw the film, he goes, dude, I went on a date with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy who's playing him, he went on a date with. Him. Oh, <laughs> is that? Uh, I guess uh, that's a little bit of research too. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's just a lot that's of commitment. Out there. <laughs> you say you know sometimes your your uh, significant other is supposed to be like you. That's kind of the perfect uh, exactly. representation, right? right? I was like, oh, a psychiatrist would be would be so happy right now. <laughs> um. You know, one thing that was that I loved reading about as well was the uh, well, oh, I guess I, I did like to read about it. It does seem like a kind of a painful wound opening, but the, the two main monks effect that happened after the film came out or after the play came out, you had people posting about their experiences uh, on social media, kind of being open about it. And that was, you know, that's, that was an inspiring thing to read about. Was that, I mean, did that kind of continue on? Did that, did that re? Um, emerge as the film was was being released, or and it does is it does it continue on now? And, and I guess the Kim Jose and, and Ben had had you had you heard of this effect? Maybe maybe not you Jose since you didn't know about the play, but uh, <laughs> did you all hear about this kind of this groundswell that was occurring? I guess you probably did, Kim, because you were in the play. So. Kim, well, Kim is the only who can speak about it. I, I um, Jose was in Miami and I was in Peru at the time living, so. Yeah, no, he couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't have too much contact with it, but he may have. I mean, you, you can see it uh, in, in in the acceptance of the film. Uh, I think the play had a role in nurturing the ground for something that was even more expansive on the idea. Showed sex scenes. Uh, had uh, you know a lot of male actors uh, playing gay characters. Uh, especially in Bolivia. So yeah, I think the repercussions go beyond just, you know, friends. But in my experience and, and to my surroundings, there were a couple of friends who who took the play as an opportunity to introduce the subject with their parents and uh, use it as a way of, of uh, preparing the ground for, for, for them to be open and, and come out with their parents. A lot of friends did it in the play. And also uh, for non- uh, gay people the play is, is a story and a message about acceptance and love so I think it also had that impact in my in my family and in my uh, certainly my circle it was a, a, a way of of letting my parents know that uh, whatever decision I do I do it out of my uh, interest and, and love to myself and trying to be truthful to myself and every decision I make is um, in my personal story um, you know, my family has always been supportive of what I want to do in life. But when I wanted, when I told them I want to act, study acting, you know, they were like, "What are you going to do, like, as an actor?" So I ended up studying something else uh, as a consequence of that. But this story uh, was a way of letting them know that no, this is what I want to do, and this is what I want to uh, think. And and you are either supporting me or or you know being by my side. So I think that's the most important thing. Uh, it only not only served people who wanted to tell to tell their truth from a, a perspective, but also from any perspective that you know you need to have a conversation with your parents. Yeah, and um, that 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 kind of segues into uh, not the, probably the last question about the film. You know, the, the the scene that I you know another scene that was really powerful is when uh, Gabriel finally came out to his sister, and I thought it was so interesting to watch because like even though he's you know, I assume that his sister, you know, in the film suspects it, but even though he's like coming out to the most trusted member of his family, I don't know if he ever actually says like, I'm gay. He kind of floats around it and kind of, you know, describes how he's drowning and how he can't be himself and how she knows, but I don't know if he ever actually says it. And I, I thought that was such an interesting, you know, experience because I imagine it's, it's just based on, he still has some shame and that's kind of, you know, what you see in that. Yeah. He, he still can't say, you know, to someone that know from his home country, like I'm gay and this is who I am. Um, so I thought that was just such a yeah. Thank you. That was one of the most <laughs> difficult scenes to do because um, that recording is real and it does exist. And we played it several times with all of the actors, uh, the, the Ana Ana Asensio who plays the sister. Um, in you know. We, we heard the, so it's, it's a verbatim uh, transcription of the real recording, but the recording is 45 minutes. 
Um, so, and, and he, he, it's even worse because he just prolongs the, the bomb. He prolongs around. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. and never gets to say it. And, and it was fascinating the fact that he never says the word gay. He says, I'm not hetero. Um, and, and that he says that around 35 minutes into the conversation oh, wow. uh, where he's just grateful and saying thank you and you're a great sister and I don't, I don't have any complaints about the family but I'm suffering and I was like what's going on what's going on and then one of the things that was beautiful about it and I think it's a great um, testament to Anna is you know we're trying to represent uh, and reinterpret as uh, a recording so we can change that scene you know and but it was interesting that what what came to both of us, uh, Anna and, and I, when we were analyzing the way she would portray it, she realized like, why is this woman, why is this guy saying, hug me three times? He says, can you please hug me? And she's like, if, if he has the need to say hug me, then there's something in her body language that is not in accordance to what she's saying because she's saying she's very supportive she's like i'm glad you said this and you know mm-hmm. i'm going to support you I'm, I'm with you now but it, you know uh there's something really odd that, that he would actually demand and ask for a hug and so we decided to go that route and play with that kind of like body language that is resisting and and there's this moment where where benjamin proposed in the scene on a where she hugs him on the second time and she, he goes, he looks at, the, uh, well, it was both of them that kind of proposed it on, on the shot, like the, we didn't rehearse it, but she kind of put her hand here, uh, kind of like hugging, oh. putting the resistance. And, and Benha just said like, you know, I'm the same person, right? You know, uh, and I was like, that's, that's it, that's it. It is, a, and, and, and obviously like everything happened the way it happened after that recording because he, he you know, I, we, we never understood what happened. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just a testament of how difficult it is to come out. And I, I feel like it was really important in, in to, to portray that, not as a quick scene, not as a representation, but just go into the deep, painful, prolonged process that it means mm-hmm. to say that word and how we find ways to even avoid saying that word. And I imagine the 45 minute version is on the Rodrigo cut, which will be coming, you know, releasing next year. In the <laughs> extended edition. No, no, I actually re- reduced it, reduced <laughs> it for the script. But I, even, you know, in the script, we shot more and we kept on reducing it because um, it, it was three hugs. And I like to play with threes. And then in, in, the, in the movie, it's only two. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, so uh, now I, I'd like to move, uh, you know, I know we've been running for a bit, so I'll try to keep this short. I'd like to move to, I call it the lightning round. It's just short, lightweight questions about the characters in the film to see how you all, you know, relate to, to things that happen in the film. Uh, I try to keep them answerable, um, but if you want to pass, that's, you know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, the first, you know, soul searching question is, do you like sweet and sour food? <laughs> that's a fantastic question <laughs> i love sweet and sour <laughs> of course, of course you do. <laughs> i love it yeah. mm, i love sweet food <laughs> um, next question what are what are you really good at making for breakfast um, omelets mm. excellent choice uh oatmeal tortilla Oh. I don't know how to say it in English. It's just like, like an omelet of, of oatmeal. Oh, really good. You never yeah. made me that. <laughs> yeah. no, you, you tried it, Jose, right? Yeah, we, we used to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah we used you tried it. Tried it. Tried it. Get it's good. Yeah. It's good. Uh, my thing is avocado toast with some poche. Oh, that's oh. fancy. Fancy. Yeah, look at you. It, and it's easy. It's so easy. Literally, you just. Mm-hmm. Mix the no the poached egg is just boil water. <laughs> yeah, slowly you just, just cut so open the avocado just... and put it on the on the toast. Yeah. And then you, and you go to culinary school for three years, learn how to poach an egg, and then it's yeah, simple. <laughs> so I imagine that uh, Kima and Benha, when you were living together, like your breakfast must have been fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> you. Uh, are are you strict about your diet? Ah. Uh... 
kind of ha half and half. Yeah, like on the weekends, yeah. I go, I, I just eat whatever. Uh, weekdays, strict. Weekends, beer and burgers and buffalo wings and all, all that stuff. Sounds uh, good. After, <laughs> after the quarantine, I'll have to be stricter, but I've never been <laughs> to this point. <laughs> We're just surviving right now, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever been to a, a, a drag bar or a, a drag night club? I love yeah. them. I love them. It, it, they they are the more fun bars in New York. Like, yeah. you, yeah. you can yeah. have a bad moment there. Yeah. Best part <laughs> of the whole new universe. Like, yeah, we, we did it for, for research as the, for the film. And I've yeah. never been there. Research. Yeah, Me neither. it was research because we were there to have fun, actually. Yeah. You had to get that, yeah. the, the, the fake grinder account up, too, while you were out there. Just yeah, to, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's research, guys. Yeah. Research, okay? I'm a professional, okay? So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, looked, that looked like a lot of fun. I mean, it looked, it looked like a very it kind was of fun. crazy, it but, was you fun. know, it's kind of tough to describe because it was, it was a very kind of crazy, open experience, but everyone looked like they were there to have fun. It didn't look, you know, like... Any, anything yeah, CD yeah. was going on. Maybe there was. I mean, I there probably was. But it, the, the scene itself looked very kind of fun and exciting. And it was fun. It you was know fun. what's interesting, though? Like, I used to, I, I'm friends. I'm <clears> friends <throat> with Tina Burner. And uh, I used to go to her show for all the time. And so I brought the, the boys to, to meet Tina. Uh, she got up to Benjamin. The first <laughs> time. Birthday. It was like the day of my birthday. Yeah, it was his birthday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they went bar. I was like, "Oh, I know the perfect bar," um, and uh, and then uh, you know we became really, they became really good friends with Tina, and then, uh, now Tina is in you know RuPaul's Drag Race, and and she has a cameo there in her movie, uh, I love her along cameo. with yeah. Holly Box Springs. Um, so it's just really yeah, it was cool. great. It was great. That's awesome. Um, do you all have like a, you know, in, the, in the film the father got this kind of like I don't know a power jacket like a jacket that you know made him feel you know I don't know if invincible or at least made him feel kind of more able to kind of be himself or or or, or change from his cult. Do you have like a like a power outfit that you that you either wear out or wear to like interviews or something like that? Some sort of uh... oh, I I got a leather jacket that I just, I just <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I've been wearing it for a long time now. It's starting to like, because it's not real leather. I got it at H&M for like five bucks, but it looks good. It's, good fit. <laughs> five. it's, starting, to, it's, start, it's starting to really like just peel off. Like, like the, 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 so I might have to like, you know, set it down soon, but uh, that's. <laughs> be a shame. They have something similar. <laughs> Which one? They gave him a lot of compliments. Remember, Benha? Oh, the, the your, big jacket. your coat. Yeah, the huge jacket. Yeah. The yeah. huge jacket. Yeah. Right. Wait, let me bring it. I have a little. Oh, oh all right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and like Kim a, like has. A oh, right. it, it was a gift. It was, it was a gift from the director. Oh. Look at that. Oh, nice. wow. There we go. That is awesome. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a birthday gift from, from this guy, from the hat guy here the director <laughs> it looks like you could be going out to a club or like going to the mountains for the weekend everywhere I've, it everywhere. Works either way. <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing yeah i, I don't have it, one. Oh, you have a poncho that you know, you're, oh, no, 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 yeah. your power oh, poncho power, yeah, power but I, the thing is i used to have a uh, a pair of, of jeans that i would take them everywhere and i actually took them with jose to the salt flats here in bolivia and it got ruined it. because of the salt, you know, like <laughs> I ruined them inadvertently. So I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> They're all whitish now. I mean, that, can, that can be stylish, though. That, that probably looks You can good. be styled. Yeah. I mean, I, can, I still wear them, but they're not as they used to be. <laughs> They've evolved, just like everyone here. You've, you've grown yeah. and, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> How do you wake up? Do you wake up uh, with an alarm, with a song, with a, a kiss? Like, how, how, do you, how do you wake up? I normally um, put my set my yeah. alarm and I wake up like five minutes before. Oh wow! Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, like it's so weird. It's so weird. Five minutes before. Um, <laughs> but yeah, with... and then I put music, play music. I wake up with three alarms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In various places. <laughs> yeah. 
I wake up with one alarm and I snooze probably like five times. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, that's a lot of my person, right? It's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> see the, the three distinct Gabriels. That, uh, yeah. all... <laughs> that's the purpose of this round, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, and, and the, the last question is Do you like Shakira? I <laughs> come on, yeah, of course, on every single way, yeah. physically, emotionally, everything yeah. about her. <laughs> <laughs> excellent uh, so the, none yeah. of you knew the songs when i ah you're lying oh. <laughs> i didn't yeah, know I mean, that song i knew shakira uh, when i was little you know but i didn't know that yeah song specifically. i had to learn the and, lyrics for that one in latin america i mean we grew up listening to shakira uh before she had her international break uh yeah. so yeah. that's the, the shakira more she was, familiar she was more like a rocker she, yeah, she was she, she used fun. to use like yeah. like a tight uh black pants and like little thick yeah. skirts her, here her hair yeah was she was at like, some point she was very like punk hmm. that's that's the shakira i'm more familiar with the yeah. old school shakira yeah. old school yeah. Shakira. but i still like her now <laughs> yeah i mean she's I, you know i i love I, I have to find out more about her her rocker persona because that sounds amazing so <laughs> yeah um, so the film is coming out. It, it came out in America in theaters uh, a couple weeks ago. It's coming out digitally tomorrow, although when this posts probably today or or, or so. Um, so now that the film is out, and you know, you're, I'm assuming you're promoting it for a little bit longer. What what's next for you all? Do you have uh, other projects or other you know things that people can see you in? I, I imagine you all have new and exciting uh, jobs. Maybe because of the pandemic, maybe you're just kind of relaxing and writing. Like I don't know what the what, what all's been going on. So. Um, we can start with uh, Kime. Um, yeah, right now I'm, I'm, because of the pandemic here in Bolivia, I'm, I'm right now in Bolivia. Uh, things are pretty much, you know, halt to a still, to a standstill. But the thing is that uh, it's a great opportunity to write. So mm -hmm. I'm writing, I'm trying to, you know, try writing out uh, roles and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're waiting also for, for another movie to, to be scheduled for release maybe on, after the pandemic. So just waiting for that and, and writing a little bit. Awesome. Uh, Jose. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of writing and it's, it's, it's funny just the timing of it, but during the, during uh, quarantine, I joined a theater company and we've just been doing a lot of uh, <laughs> Zoom plays, which is, huh. which is weird. You know, it was it's definitely weird. It's, it took, but, but not that weird because I feel like Rodrigo, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like kind of revolutionized yeah. this idea and made it like, you know, cool, you know. And then we actually did like a, we did like a Zoom version of. of we, did Zoom, Zoom. We, we did the yeah. Zoom, we did Zoom and It worked out perfectly. It was beautiful. Like the format awesome. just like lend itself to like the Zoom platform perfectly, you know. And uh, completely reimagination of the of the play with uh, Gabriel and, and Sebastian talking on, on via Zoom about him coming out and then the father calling him later instead of from on Skype, he calling, calls him on Zoom. So it really worked out and great. It's, it's and the every, mother. It's not the father. Yeah, the mother. It's uh, a mother now. It's a mother, yeah. It's a mother, yeah. That's interesting. Great twist. It's a great twist. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Plot twist. Yeah. And Sebastian is Russian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. True. <laughs> uh, that has uh, any, any anything else, sir? Um, can I speak, Jefe? Yeah. Oh. No, no, I'm a, I'm oh, asking for yeah, people. Yeah. Oh, no, we have projects. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet. Ah, uh, not yet. Not uh, yet. We have projects. You know, we have we have um, a, a project. Land uh, waiting there. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. But it's it's looking nice. It's looking nice. Um, auditioning over Zoom. Uh, not writing, but reading a lot. Um, so yeah, no, I'm I'm focusing right now. Uh, since the pandemic started, I started working with autistic people. So I'm 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 kind of like focused on there and uh, personal training online too. So it's kind of like a mix of everything. Awesome. And, all, and always auditioning and stuff, acting stuff, yeah. 
So, so you are one of the few people that is in better shape now than, than the start of the pandemic, apparently. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. My life fits better since now that uh, in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Rodrigo, Stop it. <laughs> uh, can, you, uh, can you speak about what's next for you? Is that, uh, is that under lock and key? The what? Uh, no, no, no. I actually, I actually um, shot another film while we were uh, editing to my monk. Um, and it was supposed to open uh, in Cannes last year, and Cannes was canceled. So um, we are waiting for the festival, the right festival, to do the release now. Excellent. Well, it seems it seems like that you know might be coming back soon. Although I guess we'll see. Right, it, it, every every day is different. But uh, until that comes out, uh, you can you can check out Tu Me Monk in in releasing digitally tomorrow uh and it's it's a fantastic film it's a you know it was groundbreaking the, the play was groundbreaking the film was was groundbreaking it's, it's definitely something you should check out so thank you so much for for joining me and for speaking about this film and, and sorry for going on so long but it's just such a fun you know, no, and it's it's fun. thank you so much for giving us such space and time it was really it's fun a real thank you. honor awesome thank you so much that was Rodrigo Bello, Jose Duran, Benjamin Lakowski, and Kime de Rio from Two May Monks, which released in theaters on April 22nd, 2021, and releases digitally on May 4th, 2021. So you can check it out in theaters, or if you're not comfortable with it, you can check it out digitally. It's a fantastic film. It was Bolivia's official Oscar selection in 2019. So you, you know it's a it's a really good film. And it's it was groundbreaking then, and it, it still is groundbreaking, even you know, by American standards. So definitely check it out. And if you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot and make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you.